I'm sitting in the same office I've been sitting in for years, doing the same damn thing I've been doing day after day, month after month, and year after year, fighting these banks and institutions that are destroying this country. And as I sit here in the morning, and I sit here all day long, I simply cannot understand why we don't have more people in this country who are expressing more outrage and frustration at what these banks and institutions are doing. They are destroying this country, and while they're busy doing that, you're just sitting there in your house not doing a damn thing about it. Meanwhile, we got this press that isn't doing a damn thing about reporting what's happening in this country. That's a disturbing phenomenon that the press, the mainstream press and these institutions that are out there reporting this garbage that's absolute propaganda and lies. And the American people are just sucking it in and they're believing it. You know, I've been doing these files you see sitting behind you for years now, running the same motions, running the same arguments over and over again, refining them against these corporations these banks and their lawyers that are nothing but bullies and thugs. We go into these courtrooms taking up time for our judges, from our staff, from our clerks, when simply we should not have to. Early in this debate, we heard all this arguing about how these deadbeat borrowers taking out more loans than they should, more uh, loans that were given to people that couldn't afford them, and people who borrowed more house than they could ever afford. And yet, only now are we starting to understand that it really is the banks and institutions who are the wrongdoers in this because they're the ones that wrote the loans that they knew could not be repaid. And why were they doing that? Because they had the full faith and credit of the United States government in the form of the insurance that backed up those loans that went to the federally insured loans for the direct endorsement lenders. Understand what happened here, people. When they wrote those loans, they wrote them knowing that when they went bad, they would be paid by the federal government. That's you. That's me. That's every single one of us. So I don't want to hear another comment about borrowers and their uh, big, big loans and loans they couldn't afford. What I want to hear people start talking about is how the banks and institutions are destroying this country and they're doing it with the full support of the federal government and the quote-unquote leaders that are supposed to be looking after the American people. I want to know why it is our press isn't reporting on this and you have to rely on websites like Zero Hedge and Naked Capitalism, and people like Abigail Fields, and Matt, Matt Stoller, and Matt Taibbi, a few lone voices out there in the wilderness who are screaming the truth. Why won't the American people wake up and finally start doing something about this? We have a campaign for president that is nothing but a farce. As you look in the Republican delegate counts and all the scams that's going on there, it's clear that they're being manipulated. The Republican voters in their own primaries are being manipulated by a machine that's stealing the vote and the political will of the American people. But focusing back here on what's happening in foreclosure courtrooms, it's absolutely mind-blowing to me to walk into courtrooms still to this day and see cases that are not defended or to see homeowners walking into a courtroom, walking into a guerrilla battle without an attorney representing them. You simply cannot allow cases to go undefended. I don't care what you think you're getting into communicating with the banks. If you're still living in the delusion that you can negotiate with the bank and they might give you some modification that'll make sense to you, but you're not actively fighting that foreclosure case, you're being part of the problem. You're not part of the solution here. And there are too many Americans, millions of Americans that are playing into this game and into this system that's allowing our country to be destroyed. They are working with the banks and institutions and they're causing more damage in the long run. The most frustrating thing that I see in our courtrooms is the fact that these banks and institutions continue to engage in the same systemic bad practices that got us into this problem in the first place. We're years into this. The Florida Supreme Court in 2009 recognized the problem. That means back in 2007, 2008, they knew we were heading into this crisis. They produced rules in 2010 that aimed to curb the abuses of the banks and institutions. The verified complaint rule that I've been screaming about for years now. And still to this day, we have banks and institutions and their lawyers not complying with this rule, and yet I don't see any enforcement or any real penalty for not complying with the rules. As a taxpayer, forget my role as an advocate for consumers, as a taxpayer, it terrifies me that we have such anarchy and lawlessness in our courtrooms, systemic tyranny and lawlessness that encourages further systemic 
tyranny, and lawlessness because the banks and institutions are able to ignore the rules, the rules that you and I must follow, otherwise we will face severe consequences. I've talked for years and years and years about the fact that these plaintiffs are not properly identifying themselves. I look back at some of the earliest motions that I filed, way, way, way back in 2007 and 2008, where I was screaming about the fact that I don't know who this plaintiff is that's suing my homeowner. He he didn't borrow money from this corporation, and why is it that this corporation or this trust that I can't identify is now suing him and wants to throw his family out into the street? How is this possible? If nothing else, please tell me who this trust is or where this corporation is located so I can uh, verify that they exist. I'm screaming in courtrooms, Your Honor, how can you possibly grant a foreclosure judgment to the shadowy and undefined plaintiff that we don't have any idea where they're located uh, in? The XYZ 2006 Trust. Tell me a little bit about that trust, please. Who owns that trust? Who are the beneficiaries of that trust? Because you're going to be granting a piece of America to this trust. That's what happens in a foreclosure case. When a final judgment is entered by a circuit court judge, that circuit court judge is giving away a piece of America to whoever that plaintiff is. Now, if it's a corporation we can identify, I guess I can live with that. Even if it's one of these shadowy corporations or a nominal plaintiff that doesn't really own that loan. But that nominal plaintiff is being given the title to that piece of dirt here in America. And that's wrong. Judges should not be granting property in America to corporations unless they can clearly and specifically define and understand who that corporation is. They shouldn't, and they must be able to understand who owns that loan, who it is that actually is going to be taking title to that property, to that piece of America. And yet, all across this country, in this shadowy, hidden world of wizards behind the curtain controlling the foreclosure process and taking an interest in these loans, we don't know who it is that's taking title to America. We know now, as a result of years of litigation, after this has been hidden from us by these plaintiffs, we know that the plaintiffs don't really own these loans. They are the bag men. They are the collection agents. They are the thugs that are working for undisclosed principles that are hidden from America, that are hidden from the judges that are signing these judgments. It's time for Americans to wake up. It's time for our judges to start asking questions and demand that we know who it is that's taking title to America. Now, in most cases, we understand now that who's really taking title to these properties are the federal government through their uh, agents, co-conspirators, Fannie and Freddie. But the fact of the matter is that if Americans understood that what was happening in the vast majority of foreclosure cases was that effectively the federal government was foreclosing upon a citizen, that would change the dynamic. But understand that's what's happening here. The federal government is foreclosing against Americans. Every lawsuit that's filed when the Fannie and Freddie are the real party in interest here is effectively being paid for by the American taxpayer. So that homeowner that's being sued is being sued by the federal government who's been collecting money all along the way in servicing when, when they made the loan, when they're servicing the loan, when they're modifying the loan, and then now finally when the foreclosure gets concluded. Again, I'm getting frustrated and tired about the fact that Americans are just laying there asleep and letting this happen to all of us. It's time for Americans to wake up. I don't want to see another foreclosure case go undefended. There are enough good attorneys out there that are working with Americans that every single American should be grabbing an attorney and defending and fighting that foreclosure case. When you get served with a foreclosure case, you treat that as a personal invitation for you to get involved in your court system. You use this as a personalized, hand-delivered invitation to go inside a courtroom, meet with judges, meet with the clerks, meet with the uh, sheriffs that are there to protect their, their legal system, and get involved in your legal system. I'm going to keep hounding on one fact, and that is in this state of Florida, our judicial system is grossly underfunded. And that's the fault of you and me and every single voter that have allowed the executive branch and the legislative branch to attack our judicial system. Just yesterday we heard in St. Pete Times 
that there have been new rules imposed on our elected circuit court judges that are intended to prevent them from going in front of you, the voters that support your communities, and speak out against this. That means it's up to you and me, as attorneys in particular, to speak out and defend our judicial system. We have abandoned our judicial system. We've abandoned our court system by not being involved. And the banks and institutions have stepped into that void and stepped into that place, and they, in fact, have taken over our judicial system. But it's time for us to get back in there and get more involved. I want every single one of you to get more involved in what's happening in your courtrooms out of, out of a sense of protection and common duty and honor to this country.